It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Wisdom Wednesday presented by DraftKings, and we're going to get all kinds of wisdom from longtime NFL offensive lineman whose son is now an NFL offensive lineman, who has been the NFL's vice president of the Policy and Rules Administration for five years now. Really looking forward to talking with John Runyon momentarily. Enjoyed watching him as a player both before I was in the league and then while I was a player. He played the position the way I believe it should be played. So get to John momentarily. I think you guys know we're only two days away from a new spread the word winner via social media at Ross Tucker NFL at Ross Tucker Pod, a new perhaps winner of a free Madden copy. As long as you order a story at myfrontpagestory.com, shoot me the email, Ross at Ross Tucker.com, and then the YouTube shout out winner. Love doing those cameo style videos for whoever subscribes and comments on YouTube. It's big show time. The big show. All right, as promised, we are joined by John Runyon. And I remember, John, I mean, there's a lot to get to with you, but I remember when you first got hired as the vice president of the Policy and Rules Administration, probably like a lot of people, I kind of chuckled because when you played, um, you were you played on the edge. You know, you probably got some fines. You probably got some FedExes. So... Is it a deal where it's like uh, the FBI or whatever that they, they hire the drug dealers or the DEA? They hire the drug dealers to help them help them catch the criminals. Yeah, I always say that. I, you know, kind of jokingly, I would say, if you want to burn your house down, who do you call? You call the fire marshal, right? <laughs> so they know all the loopholes and like, and like you said, I was like playing on the edge, and that line changes and it's changed a lot, and I'm sure we'll get into it, but. You know, knowing where that is, and in, in my career, it got pulled back on me a little bit, and you had to adapt to it. So that's that's really that's really what it was about, and, and I'm familiar with it, and knew the deal, and you know, it, it probably didn't hurt with my uh, stint in Washington D.C. You know, dealing with player policy, and you know, the the rule book in and of itself is uh, on the litigious side, if you will. So. <laughs> It, it, it kind of mashes the football world and, and the politics and government in the same light. So I guess I want to start actually with as a player, because that kind of frames this whole thing. You know, I say on the show all the time, John, I didn't think just blocking people was fun. I never thought that I was a D end as a freshman in college before I got moved over to the offensive line. What was fun was really trying to kick a guy's, you know what, right? I mean, that's what's fun. Punish them throw them to the ground, hit them. I mean, that's that's the part of it that I enjoyed. It clearly felt like you played that way, and I loved you for it. I loved watching you for it. What was your mindset when you were a player? Well, I had to compensate for, you know, the, I don't know, how do, how do you say this, the lack of that elite athleticism that I didn't have. And my thing was putting your hands on somebody, getting in their face and trying to get them off their game, get them worried about, you know, are you going to come up and, you know, give them a flipper in the kidney or that kind of stuff, or just get in their face and grab them and not let them go and just frustrate them and have the guy try to swing at you. It was the, it was the mental side of it and, and trying to distract them from actually playing the game. Because we all know, you know, if you're a half a step late, you ain't making the play. So that was the biggest thing is get the guy worried about other things than the snap count and all that kind of stuff. Get him to try to come after you so he's not not in a clear state of mind. So it wasn't like me where I just enjoyed that. I I thought it was more fun that way. I, I For you, it was actually very tactical that that was your best chance for success. Yeah, and it, it was kind of really came from University of Michigan, really, and I – I remind people of all the uh, of this all the time and guys that have been through that facility, you know, in the recruiting process will see it. You know, when you sit in that team meeting room, there was two mantras in the room and one was for offense, one was for defense. So the defensive side was pursuit and the offensive side was harassment. And it's up in people's grill all the time and just, 
you know, pounding on them and never letting up, never letting up. Yeah, I probably took that to another level, but that's that's who made me who I was. And it was just something I had to carry through my career. Does it frustrate you at all when you probably not actually given your role, but does it frustrate you at all when you watch football at any level now? It, it to me, I don't see as much nastiness. I don't see as much playing to the whistle. I don't see as much physicality as I guess I would like to see. That's probably my inherent bias. You're kind of in a weird spot because you're looking for those things now on some level. But do you ever watch and just think, why, why aren't some of these guys more harassing? Well, I mean, it, it's there, there's a handful of guys that do it, you know, and, you know, that that's – it's all great, but that line isn't as far down the road as when we played it. It is now, and it's really done in the in the light of uh, player safety, you know. And and that's that's really what my whole position is about, you know, is trying to protect the guys from each other and from themselves of unnecessary injury and all that type of stuff. Because ultimately, here's what it is: if your best players aren't on the field, the game isn't the best product you can have. And that, that's really what it's about is extending these guys' careers, not even their careers. You know, a lot of this, a lot of this player safety stuff is driven out of two things. You know, it's driven out of um, obviously the player safety is driven out of medical data, you know, showing that a lot of this stuff isn't necessary to have it in the game of football. You know, can we can we tailor the rules to make it safer to take some of these unnecessary collisions, unnecessary injuries out of the game? But then also, you know. Coach Madden's been very involved in this for a very long time. And when he goes back and specifically looks at his guys that played in the trenches and the issues they're dealing with, you know, with, you know, dementia, Alzheimer's, ALS, you know, we don't have direct correlations with that kind of stuff. But I think a lot of the medical science can say there's something going on there that all these even small collisions that we have in the trenches a lot of times can add up and affect your long term quality of life. And that's what we're really trying to focus on and look at until the medical science actually catches up with it and gives us a, a, a valid data point where we can hang a hat on. You know, when that day comes, I'm sure there'll be drastic rule changes possibly, but that's why we go through this process of, we have the data at hand, we, ha we have to make a change and, and try to make this game as safe as possible. All right, so I said what your title is. It's the vice president of the policy and rules administration in layman's terms. Explain to my audience what that means, basically what you do and what you don't do. Cause I think sometimes people think you're responsible for things you're not. So really everything, everything that I touch happens inside those white lines on the field on, on game day um, from, you know, the player conduct, whether it's unsportsmanlike conduct, whether it's um, unnecessary roughness, you know, and and how that interacts with the game of football, with our playing rules, and then with our collective bargaining agreement, because people forget this a lot of the times. The NFL and the NFL Players Association both have a hand in all of that rules administration kind of thing that I administer, which we call accountability measures, or most people refer to it as discipline. Those are collectively bargained stuff. So I'm going through and finding, yeah, it was a flag on the field or the flag wasn't thrown and it was a missed call. Does it rise to the level to start to administer discipline? And really, I look at the, the discipline aspect of it as an opportunity to educate. You know, because a lot of guys don't even think about it. You know, you've been in the meeting rooms, you know, you know, guy comes in and has a nasty hit and the coach goes, good hit, just keep your head up next time. Well, I goes, there's a huge player safety element to that. And, you know, there's got to be some accountability. So we have a, you know, predetermined um, process. Um, the hearing officers that I have are both former players. They're jointly appointed by us and the NFLPA. They're, they're Derek, uh, Derek uh, Brooks and James Thrash. So everything I administer, they have their day in, in the appellate process to actually make the argument, you know, to get either get that, get that, that uh, discipline vacated or get it reduced. And, and also in the new CBA, there's a remedial training process that's attached to it. So as long as they're a first time offender, 
you know, for that season, they're allowed to actually go in and actually take an educational class, complete it, and then not have it again the rest of the year and actually get another reduction on the back end. So there's a huge educational component to it. So essentially, you guys are in charge of fines and suspensions for um, illegal activity, unnecessary roughness, illegal hits, contact inside the white lines. Exactly, yes. You know, the thing I say all the time during college games, John, because targeting such a big deal there, most of the time the targeting is when a defender is hitting a guy with the crown of their helmet or the top of their helmet. The rule is really put in to to protect them, to protect the guy doing the hitting, because that's how you break your neck. And I've seen I, – I must have had five this year already – where a kid just came in like a heat-seeking missile with the top of his head right into somebody, and a couple times he did hurt his neck, and he got targeting too. Yeah, well, here's a great statistic that we've had. It's it's held true for the last three, four, five years. So think about, you know, your guys in the back end of a defense, your safeties and all that that are coming up, and those are the hits you usually see. What you don't see, so think about concussive events against a defensive lineman. Most – about half of those over the past five years, the defensive linemen head injuries have been caused by their own teammates coming in, dropping their head, not seeing what they're hitting. You know, and, that, and that's just a, a an obvious example of something that you can say, the DB's coming in, sees his own guy, sees what he's hitting, faces up, eyes are up. Maybe he doesn't strike his own teammate in the side of the head and, and concuss him. And that that's part of the process. Yes, you know, it's a 50-50 proposition when you come in and you lower your head, you can't see where you're hitting, or you're running the ball and you're running, trying to run through a safety, you drop your head. There's a chance that the ball carrier gets it. There's a chance that the defender gets it. So protecting protecting the players from each other and protecting them from themselves is really how we look at it. Do you have anything to do with taunting, John, or is that a different department? No, it it, it falls in there. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things. And uh, you know, when I first got here, you remember we kind of laxed the rules on celebrations where group celebrations, you know, quite a few, three or four years ago were a problem. They were an issue. And I, I always use this little analogy. And I know both of my daughters played flag football growing up. I go and I ask guys all the time, I goes, do you want your seven, eight year old daughter demonstrating that display of unsportsmanlike conduct on the flag football field? And 90% of guys will say no. And I'm like, then why are you showing them how to do that in a nationally televised NFL football game? It's just something where you throw something out there like that and guys step back and it's like, yeah, you, you know, you're kind of right. We're, we're supposed to be leading by example here and we're, we're leading showing the wrong example. Totally agree. Um, you know, it's not just flag football. I've said it on this show because everybody rails against the taunting. Everybody hates the taunting rule, John. Seven on seven in high school, it's out of control. I mean, these kids will get a catch over top of a kid. They'll get in their face. If the kid falls down, they'll stand over him. I mean, I would light that dude up without any – I think it's terrible. And I think – what the NFL is doing this year is smart, really smart. There may be a couple that I wouldn't have called, but I think the intention is correct. And and it's really, I mean, you know, my personal opinion here, us as a country, our respect level for each other has really come down. And yes, it carries over into society, carries over into sport and all that kind of stuff. And we haven't changed any rules. We're just taking a more hard, hard line. It's not like we're, you know, everything's taunting. We're giving you the benefit of the doubt on some of them, but officiating has said this. They said this in the preseason, sent out coaching videos and said, don't be the guy that gives the officiating crew the the itchy trigger finger, if you will, to actually throw that flag and cost your team a game. Don't, don't be that. Show some respect, i.e. sportsmanship, and move on and make the next play. You know, the, the funny thing is, is, You know, you talk about sportsmanship and taunting. You've been in games. You got a guy that's in your ear, in your face, and all that kind of stuff. And all you do is turn around, 
dude, look at the scoreboard. You're down by 17 points. Like, what are you chirping about? Like, Let's just play this game. Either that or you remember it, and then you get him on the next play or the play after that. You go in the huddle and you say, hey, 96. You know what I mean? Like, we got to yeah. get this guy. Legally, well, within people the forget play. That. People forget that. That – you know, that, that period of time between the snap and when that whistle is blown, there's a lot of things you can do on the football field that you can't do out on the streets. And that's, again, to your point earlier, that's really the fun of the game, the stuff you can get away with and pushing guys around and hitting guys and, you know, manhandling a guy. If you were putting your hands on somebody and, and forcing your will on them, that's what's great about this game. And I think that's why a lot of people love this game. They love that that – violent aspect of it um you have a son in the nfl he starts for the green bay packers along the offensive line i was going to ask you what the pros and cons are of that i can't imagine there's very many cons but what is that like for you knowing what you know knowing the positives and negatives of the business knowing the knowing that it is a tough business it is a tough business but i you know it, it's the whole thing is you got to have fun doing it because as you know, it's it, it takes a toll on your body, um, and you, you have to enjoy it. My biggest problem for me personally is with my you know 14 years of NFL experience and my knowledge and my experience and all that. He's still got a heck of a learning curve in front of him, and you can't just like click a button and download all that into him. You know what I mean? You got to trickle it in. It's like hey. Here's this scenario you were in. Did you think about A, B, and C? You know, you, your foot has to be here. Your hand has to be here. You know, your your lead step was great, but your backside hand was outside, and you have no power and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's that slow trickle of trying to get them up to speed. When when you see the mistake and just try to fix, I do it every week. I like, I'll just I'll be watching the film. And, you know, obviously it takes me twice as long to watch a Packers game because every play makes a mistake. I I'm watching the film. I take out my cell phone. I, I record it, and then I text them the video clip and put some uh, put put the relevant information below it and say, just so you know, it's a lot easier if you do this and this than you know doing what you're doing and wrestling the guy because here's the problem. I goes if you happen to play five, six, seven, eight years, and you know your your athleticism and your speed starts to tail off, and or you acquire an injury which will take that athleticism and that speed away from you. And you don't have those fundamentals and all that stuff. Your career is going to get cut short because you're not going to be able to perform. But when you have those fundamentals, you can play out there hurt and you can play out there old and slow for a very long time. Does he, does he like your feedback? Does he, does he, um, does he ask for it or does it bother him? He usually asks for more stuff on the front end you know, how do I deal, you know, say this week, you know, he's playing against Aaron Donald, <laughs> you know, so it's one of the, one of those things. I haven't got the call yet, but <laughs> you know, something like Aaron Donald, like Aaron Donald's a big physical guy, but Aaron Donald, like, unlike a lot of other players plays with his hands very, very well. Yeah. And it's a change up and that's what he's really good at. So, and it's not about, you're not going to muscle the guy. You got to really think about, are your feet your feet and hips square, and are you low enough to deal with him? Because he'll he'll drop his shoulder in your chest and try to run you back, and then then you know then just snag you and swim you and get around you. So it, it's really about all that 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 you know those intricacies of the game that a lot of people don't think about. That it falls back to what we were just talking about the baseline fundamentals that allow you to block all those different talents that they'll go those guys that you're going to have to block half you can check him out on social media at big jdr he's on twitter john runyon of course the vice president of the policy and rules administration for the nfl john this was perfect really appreciate it i ideal timing a with everything going on in the nfl and b i forgot that, that your son was playing aaron donald so amazing thank you so much not a problem ross thanks man you know what else is amazing? Keeping your hair when you're losing it, like I have done thanks to Keeps. Two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they are 35. Yeah, that means probably you. 
If I, in, like, I'm going to stop, stop, I'm stopping the commercial, okay? Guys, when in doubt, do it. If you have it in your family, like, I wish I could go back to when I was 26 and got married and I could kind of see it on the wedding video. I was starting to lose it a little bit. I would have so much more hair right now if I had just started earlier. They have two FDA approved medications that can prevent hair loss, keeps offers both. It's a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. There's a reason why they have all these five-star reviews. I'm giving them a verbal five-star review right now. And by the way, it takes four to six months to see results. So the sooner you start, the better. How about giving yourself a gift for the holidays? If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Ross to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Ross to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash Ross. Tux Takes. Hey, Ross. Well, uh, let's start with the New Orleans Saints. Um, keep suffering some injuries. Tight end, Adam Troutman, out four to six weeks with a knee sprain. And uh, left tackle, Landon Young, season entering foot surgery. I mean, there's a lot of teams that have a bunch of injuries. Happens every year. I, I think the Saints might take the cake this year. Troutman was like their last real starting skill guy that was playing. Now he's out four to six weeks. He had been their most productive skill guy the last, the most productive target the last few weeks, catching passes. Now he's out four to six weeks. Who knows if we even get back this season? And then Landon Young was the rookie that just played his first game for the Saints against the Eagles on Sunday because both Ramchek and Teron Armstead were out. And he played the whole second half with whatever's going on with his foot that needs season-ending surgery. So you know he's a tough dude already. Tux takes. Green Bay Packers left tackle David Bakhtiari had a knee scope, so he's going to miss some more time. Maybe, though, he'll be able to come back later in the season. Don't know yet. So this is really bad. This is really bad, Brian. There's no way to sugarcoat it, right? You're talking about a guy that had a torn ACL last year. He had ACL reconstructive surgery. Something didn't go right. You don't typically have to have a knee scope after that. So hopefully it corrects the issue and he can come back and play later this year. But I have my doubts and I'm concerned for him moving forward because it feels like after a guy has reconstructive surgery, if they need a cleanup procedure with a, a, a knee scope, that 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 just becomes a, a, a almost an every year thing becomes a maintenance thing. It just seems like they never quite get it right. If you need a scope after the initial surgery, let's hope that's not the case, but that's sort of my experience. Tux takes the Houston Texans cut running back Philip Lindsay. So I got to be honest with you. I, I don't watch the Texans that closely. Like I haven't been watching to see how many touches Lindsay has gotten. This surprises me. And every time I ever saw him in Denver, I thought, wow, this guy has some serious juice. This guy's impressive. And yet here we are where the Broncos let him go, and now the Texans are letting him go. I, I, I must not be seeing things clearly when I watch him. He looks like he's got all kinds of speed, but this is two teams now moving on from him. Tux takes. Former head coach for the Cowboys and Giants, coordinator jason garrett was fired by new york replaced with freddie kitchens not a huge surprise um i tweeted this at ross tucker nfl but a couple thoughts number one when you're a head coach like joe judge and you fire a coordinator in season typically that is your last ditch effort kind of a desperate measure to see if you can get things turned around for the rest of the season to try to save your job. So now, you know, Joe judge realizes we got to score more points. Daniel Jones has to play better. Let's see if Freddie kitchens calling the plays can help that. And maybe buy me another year here as the head coach of the New York giants. That's what it usually is in my experience. 
And then in particular for this game, it's uh, it's sort of an X factor now for the Eagles because they prepared Monday and Tuesday to go against Jason Garrett's offense. Now they're going, going to go against Freddie Kitchens' offense. They don't really know what Freddie Kitchens is going to run. And, of course, teams a lot of times get sort of a, a short-term boost when they fire someone like this. Everybody's antennas go up a little bit. So going to be a factor, certainly, in the Eagles game. Tux takes. Uh, one more bit of news, some, uh, another injury bit of news. Seahawks, cornerback Trey Brown, season-ending surgery. Correct. Not great for Trey Brown, obviously. Not great for the Seahawks. They've had a bunch of injuries as well, and I think that's a big reason why I don't see them having any sort of playoff chances at this point. I do see you guys looking to make sure you have ideal visibility this winter for your car. And I see you doing that thanks to AutoZone. If you're dealing with dull headlights, they've got the replacement lights to help you brighten up the road if you're driving late at night, which I do a lot. Like I'll be driving back from that Ravens-Browns game Sunday night. Oh, and by the way, always replace your headlights in pairs. Always. If your wipers are either squeaking or streaking, get rid of them. You need to be able to clear your windshield during a storm. Rain, sleet, hail. At hail recently, snow. Listen, it's always a good time to upgrade anything visibility-related but especially with rougher winter weather and longer nights ahead. Ready to see more and drive safer? Visit your nearest AutoZone or head to AutoZone.com to start your job today. Get in the zone, AutoZone. Let's get into an email, Bri. Ever wanted to ask an NFL player a question? Well, well here's, here's your, your chance. chance. It's time to ask Ross. Email address, which I love, Ross at RossTucker.com. Ross at RossTucker.com. If you ever go ahead and take advantage of any of our sponsors, send me an email and I will be able to send it to you. Although I'm looking now, Bri, we did this question already, didn't we? We might have. Most yeah. interesting person I've interviewed? Yeah. Did we do that or no? Well, do it again. Do it again. We'll do it again. Go ahead. I don't remember. And obviously you don't remember. So here's from Chris Carter who wants to know with all your experience dealing with the media and all of your podcast success, who would you say is the most interesting person that you have interviewed sports or non-sports related? Yeah. And I, I think we did do it. Um, who did you say? Do you remember? I didn't have a really good answer. I, oh, you know what? We definitely did it. Cause I said, I thought, Hearing from Carrie Hastings, the oh, right. uh, mental health clinician for the Rams, was interesting. I don't know, Bri, who have you heard over the years? You've heard a lot of interviews. Who have you heard over the years that's interesting? Anybody? Yeah, there was one. Um, it was a buddy of yours, his wife. Dawn was her name? Yes, Dawn Newfeld. That one stood out just talking about what it was like being a player's wife. That's really interesting. You know... I guess it's not as interesting for me because I know it, but a lot of people have said that like my Dawn's episode and my wife's episode were both very impactful for them because it's hearing a perspective that they don't always hear. We need to, I might need to get my wife or um, a player's wife on again soon. Cause we have a lot of new listeners shout outs, by the way, love all of our patrons, patreon.com slash RT media, especially pizza boy brewing. Sportaculture, Vision Comics with an X, HumanHeadNYC.com, and SteakhouseSports.com. Episode one of the Fantasy Feast will be posted later today. Episode two tomorrow. You can already get at the college draft and even money. Greg Cosell. Yep, even on Thanksgiving, we'll have Greg Cosell live. Well, not really live, but we're recording it tomorrow, like Thursday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.
A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 109 with it. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always. Sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 